same for anyone when yeah, as a kid you listen to music and you wonder how the hell they did it or how they make it. Yeah, probably just as a kid listening to the music my parents used to play or radio. I don't know. I think everyone loves music. Like no matter what. Or well, they're affected by it in some way. From when I was, I think, 14, I, I started playing guitar a lot more and jamming with my best friend who played drums. And we used to just have fun. We used to play every afternoon after school. And one day he came up to me and was like, hey, dude, you're either going to take this shit seriously you know, and take it all the way, otherwise, you know, fuck it, I don't even want to play with you. So, I thought about it, and then I was like, yeah, well, there's nothing else I enjoy more than playing music, so I, I just decided to kind of, like, try, try and, you know, carry on doing it, instead of just going, oh, well, I learned five songs, and now I'm just going to stop playing and play the same five songs around the campfire for people. You know, I didn't want to do that, I guess. first song I ever wrote, I thought it was awesome. I thought it was just as awesome as the songs that are right now. But the thing is that you find that over the years, every time you record something new, you look back on the old thing and you're like, whoa, I've improved so much. That was so bad. I can't believe it. So it's also nice to, through just recording your music, you're able to like look back on times and actually see the progression on how you've gotten better. And my initial idea when I was a teenager writing songs going, I want to do this for the rest of my life. I was like, let me go and work in a studio so that I can use the downtime and just record my band. And I'll just carry on doing that for the rest of my life. I don't care if I don't make money. That's what I wanted to, wanted to do. I got a job at a sound company there, which is the biggest sound company in Botswana, it's called Show Group. And I worked for the sound company for about a year, but it's very, it was very corporate and we had a lot of corporate clients and I never ever wanted to be in the corporate world ever. And a lot of the time it was just mundane being at work where you just, you set up a sound system and a stage and everything, it's like lights and it looks great. But then you end up having one guy talking about like standing up at a podium and going, this year we did the very best we have ever done. Just that like people talk shit about retirement schemes and stuff that is like totally not interesting. I don't really care about like, well done Maggie, you have, you have, you are the most improved at work. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. It has been a pleasure this year. Only hope that next year will be better. And Dave's just sitting in the back, just hating his life because he didn't want to be in Botswana and he didn't want to be sitting at a conference while people are just talking crap. Yeah, I played at Oppie Copy. It was a 10 year dream of mine. Um, when I went the first time, I was 15 years old. I didn't drink, nothing. I went there and I had a probably the time of my life I'd never actually really even seen live music so that was 2003 that I went and I remember saying to myself that day I was like one day I'm gonna play at this festival and it only happened 10 years later which it, it's awesome because it was a dream but I would have hoped that it would have been sooner the story is still not finished I don't know what's going to happen with me. Life changes so fast. Um, one day you're here, one day you're not. So I'm very happy that through writing music, I'm going to leave something behind. It's 
So, who the fuck am I as the person? I don't know, man. I'm David. What can I say? What can I say? I'm David. 